forecast first, sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Beautiful nights, Friday night out there. A lot of people probably enjoying being outside. 68 degrees, the current temperature in Champaign right now, 69 in Mattoon. Still some 70s, though, at most other locations. 74 in Lincoln and Jacksonville. And the warmer spots there at the 75. As we look to the satellite and radar picture, we've got uh, clear skies here. It's going to be just a great evening. If you've got to be out and about early in the morning, no issues throughout the day. We're looking good, but it's going to get a little bit warmer. We are forecasting highs closer to 90 degrees. We'll talk about the heat and humidity and rain that's in the forecast finally when we come back. WCIA 3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA 3 News. All schools have teachers and a principal, but one district is getting something new this year. How they'll be able to help students. Plus one state, two very different problems. How counties are faring against Mother Nature's wrath. Concert night's always, always crazy. And it draws in thousands from all over as the stage was set tonight for the Champaign County Fair. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. Integrating our services like this, I think, is a, is a very healthy step in the right direction. The Pyatt County School District is trying something new to help students' mental health. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. Jessica has the night off. Starting this year, a mental health professional will be provided to schools in the district. The goal is to give students resources to help them deal with any issues they're facing. WCI 3's Jennifer Jensen is here. So Jennifer, how is this being paid for? Paul, it comes at no cost to the district. This is a pilot program in partnership between Kirby Medical Center and the Piatt County Health Department. They're providing a licensed clinical social worker and counselor. The goal is to connect physical health and mental health resources for students who have been through trauma or high stress situations. Those individuals that are very underserved uh, are most likely gonna benefit the most from our services. And so we're trying to target that audience uh, very specifically to ensure that they are getting the services that they need. The mental health professional will work with the school administrations to identify which students could use this help. And this will be happening in four schools in the county, Atwood Grade School, Monticello, Bement, and DeLand Weldon. In the newsroom, I'm Jennifer Jensen, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Sounds like a great resource, Jennifer. Thanks. Changes could be coming for foster homes. While basic requirements such as having a properly functioning toilet, sink, shower, and tub are on the list, other rules such as not allowing smoking inside the home are surprising some. Other requirements include children in the home having to be vaccinated and everyone over 18 would have to submit to a background check. Being a foster parent is a pretty extensive process, and being licensed is a very extensive process. So um, when folks are willing to go through the process, generally they're already well beyond, um, hopefully, the basic regulations that are in place. DCFS said none of these is radical in comparison to what's being done now. It plans to work with families to make the necessary changes. It also said, quote, we aren't going to remove a child from a home for a non-compliance that's not safety related. Here's an update. Downtown Champaign is getting closer to adding another hotel. City planners say the developer is getting ready to submit a building permit application for the corner of North Neal and Hill. That's where a Marriott Aloft hotel is going to be built. A developer had planned to build the Best Western there, but those plans fell through. The Aloft hotel is expected to be seven stories with 137 rooms. There are actually not many hotel options for staying in a downtown environment. Uh, of course, there's the Hyatt Place and the Marriott Town Suites and uh, Campus Town. Uh, but other than that, uh, everything else is kind of on the edge or out in the commercial districts. The goal is for the project to wrap up by the fall of next year. Springfield police are looking for suspects involved in a shooting last night. It happened just before midnight near the corner of Lake Victoria Drive and Butler Street. Police say the victim was taken to the hospital and should be okay. If you know anything about what happened, call Springfield police. Clinton police are warning people about counterfeit money circulating in local businesses. They're $100 bills that look real but have noticeable inconsistencies. If you look closely, you can check the authenticity of counterfeit bills with a marking pen or by checking the watermark. Police are investigating. If you have any information, you're asked to give them a call. Deputies and police officers traded in their badges tonight for serving trays. Departments across the state partnered with Texas Roadhouse restaurants for Tip a Cop. They acted as celebrity waiters in a fundraiser for Special Olympics. They donate all the tips they received tonight. Law enforcement will be serving until 11. 
We have a follow-up on another fundraiser. We told you last night, last weekend rather, about a fundraiser to help Special Olympics athlete Jeremy Woolsey and his mother find a safe shelter during the hot summer. The two have been living out of a van for a few months. Retired Champaign Deputy Chief Troy Daniels created the GoFundMe for Jeremy and his mom. In the last seven days, 75 people have donated more than $7,800, tripling the initial goal of $2,500 to stay in an air-conditioned hotel. Any money going forward will now go toward helping the two settle into an apartment. Around 400 National Guardsmen from Illinois are preparing to deploy to Afghanistan. It's the biggest single unit deployment in almost a decade. They'll first go to Fort Bliss, Texas before going overseas. For some, it's not their first time. Very excited to go and serve my country and to do my job again uh, for our country. Uh, every soldier trains for this moment to be able to do your job. Deployment ceremonies will be taking place across the state this weekend. The closest is in Peoria, honoring the company based in Bartonville. The Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C. received some TLC from members of Congress this morning. Lawmakers from both parties gathered at the memorial to hand wash the black granite wall. Coming up this morning, Lawmakers put their political differences aside and picked up cleaning supplies to honor those who served and sacrificed during the Vietnam War. Serving the country again like we all did in various ways in the military before getting here. Congressman and Democratic presidential candidate Seth Moulton served in Iraq. On this day, he joined with other veterans now serving as representatives on Capitol Hill. Republican Congressman Mike Waltz was the first Green Beret elected to Congress. This is essentially what we do in combat. We all come together regardless of background, race, religion, creed, and we come together for a common cause, for a common mission. David Stone is just one of the more than 58,000 names that are here at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall that honor those who served and sacrificed during one of the longest wars in U.S. history. I think everything that we do in the Congress should have them in mind and should be worthy of their sacrifice. Lawmakers say this public cleanup is one sign of bipartisanship, but Congresswoman Elaine Loria says they're also joining forces behind the scenes. This group and uh, veterans in general um, on armed services and veterans affairs, we really have the opportunity to work together um, on a lot of issues relative to veterans and military families. Taking a hands-on approach to ensuring American heroes of the past, present, and future are taken care of. In Washington, Bree Jackson. The National Park Service organizes weekly washings of the wall by groups of volunteers from April to November. The groups are made up of students, veterans, and other organizations. There are more than 58,000 names inscribed on that wall. Well, there's something new at one county's fairgrounds this year. We'll tell you how it's going to help mothers. Plus, where can you find both a drought and a flood? Look no further than Illinois. And she earned medal after medal for track and field, but that's now behind her. She made the switch to a different sport.